Hey guys, Matt Donald here. You know, people have said that I need to be more peppy for these intros. Like, if I'm really selling, you know, Patreon stuff, I probably should, you know, actually sell it, you know, enthusiastically. So, okay, I guess you guys are gonna get your wish. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Matthew Donald. You're gonna get some quality stuff there, some very fun episodes. <laughs> Every month we talk about pop culture featuring prehistoric animals, and this month I don't have the slightest idea what we're going to talk about because I haven't recorded it, but don't you worry your pretty little head, it'll live up to the exact standards of quality that you expect from a podcaster like Matthew Donald and his Patreon. Oh, link is in the description for where you can sign up. Thank you for your support and have a fantabulous day! <laughs> I'm going to go drink some black coffee right now. Maybe some whiskey too. Roar. Growl. Snarl. Bellow. Roar. Welcome to Paleobites, the podcast that has lowered intelligence as its epimorphic trait. My name is Matthew Donald, and each week I and a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and raid a genus of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week, I'm joined by a very special person, someone who found the podcast and has some books of his own, and after he found his podcast, he he made the terrible mistake of being like, hey, I should work with this guy, because he seems professional. (laughs) It's Jason Singleton, how are you? Hey, I'm fantastic. I'm excited to be here. Oh yeah, well we're excited to have you here. I'm still I'm still kind of blown away that someone found my podcast out in the wild and thought it was good enough to be a part of it so we can have this mutually beneficial opportunity. It's pretty cool, man. Well, Matt, you know what? You do uh regularly turn up in the top ten of dinosaur podcasts, so What what? <laughs> I need to look these up. <laughs> okay. Because I want, that'd be cool. I remember seeing like a thread on Reddit that was like, hey, you have any other dinosaur podcasts to listen to? I like I Know Dino and Paleocast and Paleo Bites. And I'm like, oh, well, look, I made the cut. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Paleo like, Bites you know, is you, such a cool name, too. Oh, well, thanks. It is, uh, I came up with a name because, like, well, it took me a while to come up with a name, I, I, but it has multiple layers. One, it was designed to trick people into thinking this was about the paleo diet, which I thought was funny. Uh, two, since it's up, there, each episode is pretty short ish. So, since each episode is really short, like, and it, it's more like to introduce people to these concepts, these dinosaurs, and if they want to learn more, they can look at it later, and that's why it's like bites, like bite sized episodes. And paleo also is like, it means it's not just limited to dinosaurs, it's not dino bites. So, <laughs> dino yeah. bites. Seems I mean, that'd like be a lot of dinosaurs had the paleo diet. Uh, possibly. I I've, I've assumed they all did by default. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, normally, I like to, um, like, the first question I got a new co-host is, what is your favorite dinosaur? And, and then, uh, but this instance, I guess I can ask you that real quick, but then I have another question to ask you since you're a special co-host. So, what's your favorite dinosaur? Sure, yeah. Well, my, my dad joke uh, answer to this is always Thesaurus. Uh, because I always carry one in my back pocket. Uh, ah, but yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> good uh, one. Yeah. Uh, my favorite dinosaur is the one that we're discussing today, actually. So, uh, the Deinonychus. Oh, Deinonychus? Awesome. That makes sense. It is a good one. So, the other question I was going to ask you. So, at the end like of each episode, as uh, I also ask people where they can find you. But I thought since this is uh, we want this to be a mutually beneficial opportunity, I thought uh, I'd have devote this time for you to tell a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, you know, uh, I'm a dad first and foremost, so that's where my passion cool. is. Uh, uh, I like to read and write, and I like to eat good food. Uh, I live here in Las Vegas. You'll see on the dedication page uh, of my book uh, that it's dedicated to Taylor. That's my daughter. Um, and nice. And what is your book called again? Uh, Dino Mike. Ah, yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Dino Mike is a story about... Can you tell us a little bit, like, give us an elevator pitch of the book, please. I know you've told me uh, over the uh, uh, off-podcast, but let's tell the listeners, you know. (laughs) Yeah, Dino Mike is a story about a hungry dinosaur who learns you can't have your friends and eat them, too. Ah, I I love that tagline. That's so great. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. So yeah, I'll prob- I'll have a link your book on the description of this episode and of of all the episodes you're going to be in, so... Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, and, uh... Uh, Another note, I uh, I just received a Megazoic 
in the mail, so I'm excited to sit down and read this. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm excited to see what you think of it, of this silly story I came up with when I was 12 and just started building and doing different versions of my head ever since! <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. But let's get right into the thick of things here. We'll talk about the terrible claws, as it were, and not the claws of the fact that we were, were obligated to discuss dice. That was a bad joke. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so we're talking about Denonicus. It means terrible claw. And this is a pretty classic dinosaur that I, for some reason, I have not talked about yet. But it's good that I was able to save it for with you, so... But type it is a dromeosaurid, a group of theropod dinosaurs informally known as the raptors. Long-time listeners should know this by now. We've covered plenty of dromeosaurids. Uh, I really like, was that one Halska raptor? The one that's like a duck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Size, 11 feet slash 3.4 meters long, 154 to 220 pounds slash 70 to 100 kilograms. I'd like to say I'm smaller than Deinonychus, but alas, I cannot. Not truthfully, anyways. Yeah, it blows my mind uh, kind of how... Uh... Blows my mind kind of how long some of these dinosaurs were. Well, I got, okay, look, I'm not 11 feet tall, I should say, but I am more than 220 pounds. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, these dinosaurs are so nimble. Like, they're very light. Like, they're much, they're much uh, less dense than mammals are. <laughs> right. Like, like a T-Rex, for being 20 feet tall and 40 feet long, it's incredible that it weighs about the same as an elephant. <laughs> wow, that's mind-boggling. Uh, so like an elephant, so much smaller, you'd think, but it is a carnivore, uh, Deinonychus is. It lived in the early Cretaceous, 115 to 108 million years ago. Location, USA, particularly Montana, Utah, and Wyoming, and Oklahoma. Some isolated teeth fossils imply that it might have breached all the way to Maryland, but these have not been officially identified yet, so we'll have to see. It was described in 1969, which sparked the dinosaur revolution that kickstarted a modern understanding of dinosaurs. And I think that's a pretty notable event in 1969. For the life of me, I can't think of anything else that happened that year. <laughs> oh, and I should probably specify, when I was writing this joke, I was like, oh, God, wait, what if people think I'm one of those? No, I'm not a moon truther. We did land on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they found some fossils up there. <laughs> You know, I've actually heard that might be a possibility. <laughs> and not because of like, oh, dinosaurs had spaceships, but because maybe there's a teeny tiny chance that when the meteor hit the Earth, it might have launched some rocks up, and some of the rocks might have had fossils, and some of those fossils might have landed on the moon and somehow survived the trip. That seems like a lot of, like, very, very slim chances, but you never know. We could legitimately find dinosaur fossils on the moon. You know, we shouldn't roll out the possibility. Yeah, I mean... Why, and then we see conspiracy theorists that'll, that'll be like, oh my god, they got here first. <laughs> uh, um, so pop culture appearances for Denonicus. The most famous one is probably Jurassic Park. You might be thinking, wait a minute, that's Velociraptor. Well, it is, but it's Velociraptor Antiropus. And that was later revealed to be not be another species of Velociraptor, but what Deinonychus was meant to be. See, Michael Crichton subscribed to the now outdated theory by paleontologist John Ostrom that discovered Deinonychus, that Deinonychus was actually another species of Velociraptor. So the, the, the true Velociraptor is Velociraptor mongoliensis, uh, and those are like the three feet long you know, desert dwellers. But uh, these are like, hey, these are Velociraptors, but bigger. And Michael Crichton was like, cool, I like that name better than Deinonychus, so let's do that. <laughs> and this is true in the movies as well, because in the first Jurassic Park movie, they uncover Velociraptor skeleton in Montana, which is where Deinonychus would be, but not Velociraptor. <laughs> so kind of implying that in the Jurassic Park universe, it's Velociraptor and Antoropus, So, Right, yeah, I think that's how I got uh, introduced to this species, too. But also in the video game Jurassic World Evolution, you get Deinonychus as a separate species, where it's given basilisk-like fins and a shorter skull to differentiate from Velociraptor in a franchise-appropriate manner. So who knows what the two fit canonically speaking? <laughs> yeah, they're uh, they're much harder to keep in the fences in that game too than the Velociraptors. They are, but they have some cool skins. I like that one that makes them like black with like a bright red streak. That was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, gosh, what a great game. <laughs> it's a great game. So, as well as in the Jurassic Park franchise, it's in the books Raptor Red, Dinoverse, Primitive War, and my co-host here's books Dino Mike, uh, the video games Dino Crisis and Zoo Tycoon 2 Extinct Animals, and the TV programs Clash of the Dinosaurs, Jurassic Fight Club, Monsters Resurrected, the stop-motion animation Prehistoric Beast Shorts by Phil Tippett, and the movie Dino King 2. I 
also learned that Deinonychus is actually the first dinosaur to be depicted with CGI because there was like a commercial in like the early 90s, like before even Jurassic Park, that had like a Deinonychus like with a breakfast cereal or something. I don't know. I thought that was cool. Oh, wow. But yeah, so Deinonychus uh, is really, really important to the study, to the our knowledge of dinosaurs. We had known about like uh, dromaeosaurs before, like Velociraptor was discovered in the 30s, but we didn't really have a lot of data on them. And uh, particularly the one most important evidence of data that we knew of that that really th that we learned with Deinonychus that we know now is the reason why the the dinosaur revolution happened is that claw because at first when they found it you probably know this but I'm telling this to the listeners <laughs> so <laughs> when they first found it they thought it was a hand claw and it kind of like clawed at things kind of like you've seen like a uh, the way like a Komodo dragon kind of just slashes at like a corpse with its like front foot yeah like a scythe. Yeah, it's kind of just like very slow and sort of because this is back when we thought dinosaurs were slow and stupid and cold blooded reptiles. So, <laughs> and then once we found out, once John Ostrom found out that the uh, it belonged to the foot instead, it's like, wait a minute, if this thing belonged to the foot, that means it'd have to be pretty agile. It would have to use a lot of karate kicks. It would have to like leap. It'd have to you know, raise its foot in ways that we couldn't before. That's not like how we thought dinosaurs are. And then. Through that, like, it really ignited the debate whether dinosaurs were warm-blooded or cold-blooded. After a while, it really stopped the image of dinosaurs being plodding, like, cold-blooded reptilian giants. They could be small and sleek and intelligent as well. Yeah, it's sort of like the difference between when they switched over from stop-motion animation to CGI. <laughs> yeah. And I get that too. Like, I really do like those. Uh, those. Uh, you, you've seen those stop motion ones by Phil Tippett, right? From like the Donaticus, and I can. I think the Struthiomimus or something. Yeah. Or, yeah, those are cool. I like those. Phil Tippett is also the guy that uh, was in the credits of Jurassic Park. It says like dinosaur supervisor, and so all, there's the memes where everyone's like, "Phil Tippett, you had one job. Thanks to you, people died." <laughs> <laughs> so. Because, like, originally, I think Jurassic Park was intended to use stop motion as well until someone came in and was like, hey, let's try computers. I think it'd make it more realistic. Yeah, and, they, uh, and so Phil, they sort of, they sort yeah. of went rogue in the process, right? They did it, they did it behind yeah. the director, behind Spielberg's back, and then uh, kind of risked his job in doing so. I think I remember hearing that, too. But I think after seeing the, di the results, the difference between, like, Phil Tippett's stop motion that he had had but, and the CGI, he was like, this is the future. I'm going to do this. But he kept Phil Tippett in to be like, to keep storyboard certain scenes with stop motion. Right. It's like, it's sort of, it's an interesting sort of thing. How like people like they're like jobs or whatever that might come across as like outdated, but those, those, uh, roles are still very useful and other things. So like, you know how in, at least in American theatrical animation, it's mostly CGI now. Very few, like, 2D traditional animation. But 2D traditional animators very much still have jobs. You can see, like, concept art of, like, animations of, like, Poe from Kung Fu Panda or, like, other characters that are meant to be CGI. But the 2D animators create, like, little 2D animated scenes of them just to kind of get the feel of their movement as a character. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I agree. But, yeah, so... Uh, Ostrom's description of Donaticus in 1969, it has been said by some it's the most important discovery of, pa of dinosaur paleontology, uh, maybe even beyond that of Archaeopteryx, because it changed so much <laughs> in how we view dinosaurs. So, like, it was, it's incredible how much this one change made it work. And also, like, now we think that... I think I remember reading that, like, dinosaurs are... Well, the big ones are not fully warm-blooded because if they were, they'd overheat. They're what's called mesothermic. Have you heard of this? No, I haven't. Mesothermic? Yeah. No, en enlighten me. So it's basically, it's like a mix between warm-blooded and cold-blooded where it's like, you have, you're still a little bit more active, you still have a little bit more uh, of, a, of a drive, but you don't, you don't emit so much heat that you overheat is at that size and also if you're a big t-rex you don't have to eat way more than you possibly could kill in order to survive I so see. oh that's because like yeah that's super interesting uh yeah um but like Deinonychus, like ones like raptors they're probably fully endothermic they're probably fully warm-blooded uh and also to be fair it's a spectrum or it's not like because some when you're a kid and you hear about warm-blooded and cold-blooded like oh mammals are warm-blooded reptiles are cold-blooded and it's like eh, it's not really that simple because like 
on one hand, you got, like, so mammals, like, you say, oh, mammals are warm-blooded, but then you got, like, the sloth, which is warm-blooded, but one of the reasons why it's so slow is because its metabolism and its blood, it, it's almost mesothermic itself. <laughs> so, like, it, it's, it's got very cold blood for a warm-blooded creature. And then, on the opposite end, you got the shrew, an animal that's so hyperactive <laughs> and so has such a huge metabolism that if it doesn't eat every two hours, it dies. Who do you think did the sloth better, Ice Age or Zootopia? Uh, uh I'd say Ice Age because the sloths and Zootopia were kind of one note. Yeah. <laughs> I did like them. I thought they were funny, but... I just think a, also, a what... DMV desk is a perfect job for a sloth. <laughs> oh, for sure, absolutely. Did you see, there was like a short of Zootopia. They have several shorts on Disney+, Plus, and one of them was like, that one sloth tries to propose to another sloth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Will you marry me? And she's like, no. And everyone's like, aw. And then he looks disappointed. And then, but then her eyes widen. And it's like, wait, yes, I'll marry you. <laughs> <laughs> so wholesome. It is. I always wondered, though, in terms of Ice Age, what kind of sloth is Sid supposed to be? I know he's supposed to be one of those ground sloths, but he's kind of small for a ground sloth. He's not like a Megatherium. I guess he could be like a Megalonyx or a Glossotherium or something. Yeah, he's sort of a, sort of timid like a shrew, too, since you brought up a shrew. He's, like, anxious, isn't he? Yeah, he is. And also, and to be fair, the Ice Age movies do a really good job uh, of, like, having some obscure species. Yeah. Uh, and... Like, you, you've seen the third one, the one that, you know... Yeah, the dinosaur, dinosaur one. <laughs> you know that part where the, quote-unquote, raptors are following them? Yeah. Those aren't raptors. Those are guanglongs. You know, I feel like raptor has just become this catch, sort of catch-all phrase, you know? Oh, for sure. But, like, uh, well, they, they're, they're meant to fulfill the sort of niche of raptor and the sort of storytelling narrative devices raptors. But if you look, they have the little head crests on their nose that, like, Guanglong had, and the producers have said they are Guanglongs. They also wow. don't have the foot claws. They don't have the sickle claws. They are meant to be Guanglongs. And Guanglong was discovered and described in, in during production of that, and they're like, let's throw that in there as a little twist on the raptor sort of thing. I'm like, that's really cool. Good on you, Ice Age. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if that was a creative decision like in uh, Jurassic Park where Ice Age was wondering if their I, I, target I think demographic something could, like, yeah. Yeah, I thought something like that. Well, then, like, you know, like the fourth movie has a Leviathan, like, or a Leviathan or however it's pronounced, the big whale. Yeah. <laughs> that was, And then the fifth one, the one where it went all, I mean, they're all pretty ridiculous, but the fifth one is extra ridiculous. And it has those raptors that fly they're feathered but they're like dakota raptors but they full-on fly and i'm like i don't think they those the ones that were that big would fly like denonicus probably was wouldn't even fly either it's probably like the ones like microraptor and like that's it and maybe not even microraptor microraptor might have just glided right yeah i was wondering like you you think some of these uh some of these animals could fly like glide like squirrels like flying squirrels potentially i think it'd be kind of interesting to like have a scene where like like you know, I remember in, you remember in like uh, the Hobbit uh, Battle of the Five Armies. You saw those movies, right? Yeah. Where Legolas like leaps from like stone to stone as it's falling because it's an elf. He's so light footed. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine a raptor doing that, where it doesn't fly, but like as the stones are falling, it kind of flaps its wings to just kind of maintain enough lift to get up to the top of the falling thing. That's kind of what I see. Right. Like. Uh, like. Like Rosalina from the uh, Mario franchise <laughs> when she flies exactly. the dress, or <laughs> <laughs> that is that is our scientific inquiry. It's like <laughs> characters like Rosalina. From... <laughs> I've always I've always preferred Rosalina. Uh, oh, Rosalina or Daisy are the the Mario girls I like. Peach is kind of bleh. She's all right, but she's kind of basic yeah, she's okay. Rosalina is the cheat code, though. She can make the jumps. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but yeah, so basically, yeah, Denonicus, um, other than like how important of a lamp, of how much landmark of a discovery it was, the other thing that's notable about it, I believe, is the, um, the whole idea of pack hunting for uh, dinosaurs started with Denonicus because a lot of it, there has been finds where a bunch of them were surrounding a poor Tenotosaurus. Yeah. <laughs> The cannon fodder of dinosaurs. 
support. It's it's just to not. It's just ugh. we'll we'll get to dinosaurs because that's one on our list here. And it's just that, that poor dinosaur is only known for being the food of of <laughs> Right. <laughs> There's no other purpose. Um, the hamburger of dinosaurs. And so <laughs> all these ones together, like it is, it is does seem to be indicative that they were pack hunters. However, there have been other there have been other f- cases where they have found like they have found that the babies of a, I don't think it's Velociraptor, it might be like Velociraptor or Dromaeus or something. The babies have a different diet than the adults. If they were pack hunters, they would they would have the same diet. Hmm. Because they'd be part of the pack. So, and like Pack hunting is pretty much exclusively a mammal trait, too, from what we know of. Like, other animals might kind of crowd a corpse together, but other than that, like, uh, it's like it's like what, what could have happened, potentially. I mean, it could also have been a pack hunter. Who knows? Is that the Tenontosaurus had already died, and a bunch of Tenonicus kind of all teamed up, like, to tear it apart, kind of like uh, uh, Komodo dragons do with a uh, ox corpse or something. Yeah, like scavenging. <laughs> scavenging or something. I don't know. But, like, it, it would be cool if it hunted in packs. I mean, it, it, is there, like, do you know if there's there's any evidence of, like, because, like, Tenontosaurus was four tons, which is way too big for a single Tenontosaurus to kill. Enormous. Is there any evidence, do you think, of, like, a, a Tenontosaurus being flat out killed by a Tenontosaurus? Do you know of that? Uh, you mean, like, false, like fossil evidence? Yeah. Yeah, n- uh, no, none that I know of. Um, yeah, so it's possible that they weren't pack hunters, which is sad because I like the fact that they were pack hunters. It's sort of like when I learned that most dinosaurs we didn't think could roar. When I'm like, aw. <laughs> when are these going to be movie monsters? But I get it. Like, it's good for science to c- continue forward and uh, stuff. Also, in terms of flight, apparently in a 2015 paper, it was reported that. Maybe the babies might have flown. Baby Denonicus. Oh, that's crazy. So that's cool. <laughs> wow. How would uh, how would the babies be able to fly and not the adults? Because they because were so much lighter? The, and also the mobile and the open and mobile nature of the shoulder joint. Okay. Uh, for the for the immature fossils that is not th- that like it's fused back it gets it gets fused more as the adults. So the babies are able to move their wings more. Wow. And raptors basically had wings. They're basically depicted now with wings. They still have claws on the on the end of them, and they can kind of hold them out more. But they basically have wings. <laughs> so, right, yeah, that's how I picture Deinonychus too. But yeah, Velociraptor is a. I mean, uh, Deinonychus is a really really cool dinosaur that I think needs to get. It, I think I feel like it it doesn't get talked about as much because Velociraptor has the cooler name, but when people are like, oh, but Velociraptor's too small, it should be Denonicus, and then suddenly like Utah Raptor comes along and is even bigger right, and huge. completely steals Denonicus's thunder. I don't know. So. I, I I think it's subjective, man. I think I think Deinonychus is a really cool name. Oh, it is. I think it has... And also, like, I like how we all call it Denonicus, even though, based on like the way that the compound of it is based on other things like Dinosuchus and Dinochirus, we really should call it Dinonychus. But no, it's Dinonychus. <laughs> right. Yeah. I also I've think, always wondered that. It's like I always think that yeah. the plural should be Dinonychi, but I think it's Dinonychuses. Uh, actually, I'm fairly certain because it's uh, it's a scientific name. The plural is just the same singular. Dinonychus. So, like a pack of Dinonychus. Yeah. Yeah. So if 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 you're like using an informal name for it, like like Rexes, as not even like just T Rex, but like just Rexes, like oh look, watch out for those Rexes. Then then it would be like that. But like it's like oh, watch out for those Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> so, All right, yeah. Sort of like, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, I think that's enough to probably. St- I mean, there's so much we could talk about with Deinonychus. It's such an incredible dinosaur. But again, this is Paleo Bites. And I think we've covered a lot of the big stuff on it. If you want to learn more, you know, there's a lot to learn. So uh, for now, I guess we can rate Dinonychus 1 out of 65 million. I'm going to get like a 63 million. I think it's, it only loses points for me because there's a few raptors that do the same thing, but kind of cooler, like Utah Raptor or Velociraptor. But Dinonychus is the OG, and it deserves our respect. So so what do you, what do you rate, Dinonychus? Oh, rating out of uh, 1 to 65 million? 
Yes. I'm going to give it a solid. I'm going to give it a solid 63.5, Matt. 60 yeah nice i mean hey why it makes sense your favorite dinosaur yeah i mean that's it i'm a i'm a i'm a fanatic here so <laughs> like, well, always room for improvement i'm gonna i'm gonna leave a little a, a little grace at the end in case you know there's always new species being discovered something could always take that mantle but right now Donakis has your heart that's it I, I get that. Like, that's how I am with Sign Raptor, which is my favorite dinosaur. I don't know why. I just found it in a book when I was a kid. And I was like, Sign Raptor? That's freaking cool. It's not even a raptor. It's a metriocanthosaurid. But I'm like, I love this thing. I must have one. Um, <laughs> and so I, it's the main character in my Megazoic books. And, yeah, I, I don't know what it is. It's just that medium-sized theropod just has my heart. <laughs> But if someone asks me what is your favorite dinosaur and they want like a more traditional answer, I'm like, oh, Stegosaurus, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> I do really like Stegosaurus. It's probably my second favorite dinosaur. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, all right. Well, that's it for this week. If you want to get a whole show, you can contact me at paleobitespod at gmail.com and or paleobitespodcast at gmail.com, paleobitespod on Twitter, and paleobitespodcast on Instagram. And, or you can find me at Matthew Donald Crater on Facebook and Matthew Donald 64 everywhere else like Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, so, Jason, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at one ton dot press. Also on Instagram, uh, one ton dot press. Website and Instagram. Nice. Well, and sounds good. I yeah, also have a. Read Dino Mike. Read Dino Mike. I mean, yes, of course. Read Dino Mike indeed. <laughs> you can't have your friends and eat them too. Yes, uh, I, I, that's good. Uh, there are some friends I'd like to eat. Well, that sounds. <laughs> 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 okay so all right um i also have a book series on amazon megazoic available for print and kindle there's not a dinonicus character but the species is mentioned once in a certain seg in one segment i have a list of my document pa on my paleobites google document here of like all the dinosaurs i either name or are characters in my books and there's a lot so uh but yeah dinonicus there's no character of dinonicus but the species is mentioned uh I also have a book series called Tesla Knots. Well, just one is the one that's out right now. And no dinosaurs in it, but I just thought I'd plug it. <laughs> and, all right, well, that's it for this week. As I say, at the end of every episode of Paleo Bites, I guess this is more, like, they would chirp like birds, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs>